It's the last thing any university wants to happen. A disaster on campus, an explosion followed by fire, chaos, and numerous injuries. Did your baby get hit at all? I don't know, but it hurts. Fortunately, this is not a real emergency. It's a simulated disaster planned and executed by faculty, staff, and students at Methodist University, a collaborative, practical learning exercise involving six different campus departments. The emergency that uh, uh, the disciplines are responding to here today uh, is that uh, a person has come to Methodist here uh, for one of our football games uh, and uh, gets here early enough and is, is fatigued, uh, so to speak, and uh, decides that uh, their way to pump themselves up would be to, uh, to cook up some meth. Oh my God, you're hurt. Yeah, we need to send her. And uh, has an accident, a chemical accident, which results in a fire and an explosion uh, in, in the vehicle, uh, which then uh, grows larger and uh, sets off the fuel uh, tank and starts the, uh, the truck on fire. Ma'am, you have an injured child. Come to me. Responding Come to, to me. this mock meth lab explosion are undergraduates majoring in justice studies, applied forensic science, environmental and occupational management, and from the School of Health Sciences, athletic training, nursing, and physician assistant studies. Students who have never collaborated before, but today they are partners with a common goal to save lives and learn. Pat, you got some bleeding, okay? I'm just oh, covering up your okay. bleeding oh. for right now. Command and control arrived before dawn to set the scene. They staged the truck, complete with a realistic meth lab cooker in the truck bed that had all the necessary vials, drugs, and tubing. Then they strung trash everywhere to simulate debris from the blast and carefully placed key bits of evidence from the cooker throughout the crime scene. To defend, can you put this in the compartment? Meanwhile, the director of the athletic training program applied moulage to 10 students and volunteers who portrayed the victims, giving some severe cuts, others broken bones or head wounds, even facial burns and a severed femoral artery. One, two, three. Each team responds to the scene and executes their part as if it were a real emergency. While they work, upperclassmen observe and evaluate their performance. It's what organizers like to call action learning. What I'm looking for is you're going to label the waste. The evaluator will, will be basically the grader and evaluates whether or not they, they actually engaged in the behaviors uh, that they're, they're educated and trained to engage in in this type of, of incident. All right, sir, some of the EMS are here. They're already taking some people out. They'll be over with you in a minute. Um, I was definitely expecting there to be a good amount of injuries. I didn't expect the children or the pregnant women. I didn't expect the babies, but I guess that's more realistic in such an environment. Putting myself in the victim role and being in the scenario, it was a really unique experience. Um, as the mom character, I was really upset that my daughter was, I was telling them she was having an asthma attack and okay, keep monitoring her breathing and nothing was done to help her. So um, in this scenario, the mommy role really came out and uh, it, it was really an eye-opening experience to see how that felt even as the victim. I can carry that over into my nursing profession to understand their emotions that are going on. Overwhelmingly, students were impressed by how much they learned from this event and a big part in their learning experience, both during and after the exercise, involved technology. <laughs> Having the latest technology is a priority at Methodist University. Students here enjoy numerous opportunities to use the professional tools they will encounter in the workplace. Practical learning experiences provide students with opportunities to safely make mistakes and be better prepared for what they will encounter in the real world following graduation. James, can you hear me at all? I have no response, gonna open up the airway. In addition to live victims, the nursing simulation hospital was equipped with high-tech mannequins that could emulate various symptoms and conditions, such as profuse sweating, bleeding, heart failure, and breathing trouble. 
The mannequins could also open their eyes and talk to the nurses and PAs working with them. It's going to release some of that air or any fluid that's in there that's causing you to have difficulty breathing. Is that okay? Yes. Instructors observed the students and could program the mannequins' symptoms. Still easy to ventilate? Mm-hmm. Every room in the hospital also had wall-mounted cameras to record the emergencies as they developed. Mannequins, live patients, nursing students, and physician assistant students were strapped with GoPro cameras to record their point of view as the scene progressed. Professional videographers and photographers also captured the action. We as humans sometimes have faulty memory. Well, that, that camera provides ground truth. So, you know, what did I actually say? What did I actually do? You know, what did I see? I can review that later on and, and learn more from it that way. My students actually want to see how they performed. Um, and so I think that's going to be a very valuable experience, not only for them, but for us as instructors, and then ultimately how we teach students going forward. It'll be interesting to see how we did, because of course you think that you've done worse, and it'll be interesting to see what we actually did and what we did good on and what we all need to work on as a team. Though much of the video footage was edited into instructional DVDs, students got a cursory look at their performance immediately after the exercise by way of group-specific after-action reviews. The second point of failure uh, uh, very often uh, is, is being overcome by events and, and not realizing what's going on. The students were questioning how the whole event went, what their expectations were, and if their expectations were met, and what they learned, what they would have done differently. The feedback from it has been terrific from our students, and so that's one of the things is now we will go back and look and say, how do we either make, uh, create similar events, maybe not on this scale, but to incorporate them, to put them in this type of a, so growing experience. Uh, and then ultimately going forward um, to enhance their overall education and may potentially even change our curriculum. Okay, can you, can you stand up? <laughs> this lifelike practical exercise took place on a cool April morning in a small parking lot on the Methodist University campus. Total time start to finish, seven hours. We've got uh, multiple casualties here. We're going to need multiple EMS units. Campus police officers were the first to respond. Their job was to secure the scene, assess the patients, move them to safety, and search for a suspect. You know it's good training when one of my officers said to me later, I knew it was a simulation the whole time, but my heart rate was up, my voice was a little higher and a little firmer than normal, and I was really getting into the scenario, and that's what we want. Oh, God. Next to rush in were the athletic trainers who, in this scenario, were at the football game nearby when they heard the explosion. Oh, me hurts so bad. It's too so bad. Their job was to assess the scene, decide which patients needed help first, treat them, and call for EMS. She needs to go now. She has chest pains. I learned to scan the area primarily before we just dive right into. Uh, help people. It's a little bit harder than it sounds just because when people are screaming and they're yelling for your help, you kind of go to where the screaming is rather than trying to find what is really important. As the scenario unfolded, the mock victims were transported to a nearby hospital, i.e. the nursing simulation hospital at Methodist University. Nursing and PA students were given basic patient stats. Pulse ox is 96%, rest sounds are clear to auscultation. But just like a real emergency, there were plenty of surprises. He's crashing. Let me get a crash cart real quick. It's amazing to me how much adrenaline you really build up, even though it is a mannequin. It's, it's so lifelike, and that really surprised me how stressed I was. You know, in our rotations, we're, uh, we're with somebody. Um, and we don't necessarily have to do all the decision making ourselves, but in this we were actually thrown in, you know, sort of like a baptism by fire and we had to uh, do this on our own and, and same thing with the nursing program, so it was a great experience. At Methodist University, instructors understand difficult exercises are important for effective learning. Eyes are pearl. Team leader? Yeah. All right, photographer? Back at the crime scene, the forensic science students were challenged to process an entire crime scene, 
something they had never done before. The students had to identify the evidence, mark and collect it, as well as document the entire area with photos and two-dimensional sketches, all without disturbing the crime scene. We've never done a full scene. We've only done increments of um, evidence by itself. So it was interesting to learn um, where the evidence is going to be and how to collect it when it's not in a controlled lab environment. We only had time to collect, I think, three pieces of evidence. And so definitely when you're on a real crime scene, uh, it's, I can tell it's, it'll take a, at least a couple hours, if not more. If this had been a true meth lab explosion, Hazmat would have had to remove the dangerous chemicals and clean up the site. True to its commitment to excellence, Methodist University has one of the best environmental and occupational management programs in the country. So, students who will one day face challenges just like this suited up to clear the site. I wanted them to learn how to put on the suits, how to respond, how to use test methods, how to clean up, and I think they did a pretty good job. Wearing their Level B Tyvek suits, the first set of environmental and occupational management students contained a gas leak, tested several substances to confirm they were indeed hazardous, then hit the decontamination showers to remove the chemicals they were exposed to. It's an excellent teaching tool because they learned from experience what worked, what didn't. Once the chemicals were contained, Cleanup crews came in to remove the hazardous materials. There were many lessons learned from this exercise, and every lesson learned was achieved in a safe environment where no real harm could be done. What I heard in, with the students as they were finishing it up is how, how amazing this experience was, how much they enjoyed the collaboration, and what a wonderful preparation for the real world when they become healthcare professionals, that they've had a chance to work alongside nurses, uh, other practitioners, uh, physician assistants, uh, the uh, athletic trainers are involved with this, for, forensic scientists, all those that come into play in any incident, uh, any disaster, any accident, and have that experience here at Methodist University and our simulated hospital and the other facilities that are involved today, I don't think it's, it's, it's matched anywhere. You might wonder why a school the size of Methodist University with roughly 2,400 students would endeavor to orchestrate such a large multifaceted exercise. The answer is simple. It's about the quality of education and experiential learning. The action learning, the, the real learning experiences that students get here at Methodist University uh, are the type of learning experiences that, that almost no other university in America uh, gives to their students, especially at the undergraduate level. When we were developing these programs and as we were planning these facilities, it was within mind, within mind that we would have the opportunities for collaborative experiences and integrated experiences. <laughs> Methodist University was able to support this mock disaster with a technology grant from the federal government. This exercise is covered under funding supplied to us by the Department of Education in Washington under something called a Title III grant. There were over 400 applications and only 40 schools were funded. And we, the year we applied, we were one of the 40. So we were very, very fortunate. More than 60 Methodist University students and 20 faculty members collaborated on this disaster drill, an event faculty members began planning some eight months ahead of time. We actually have been thinking about this collaborative exercise for actually a few years now. But the actual hands-on, you know, brainstorming, script writing, getting the equipment, deciding what to do, all, all of that, uh, the storyboarding, what have you, uh, we did beginning in August. It absolutely met my expectations and to a degree it exceeded my expectations. Uh, I, I had a great deal of faith in what my students would be capable of, uh, pulling it all together from the planning side of things was quite an event and I'm glad everything has worked out as well as it has. Thanks to the many hours of hard work and planning, these Methodist University students are now more prepared for what they will face when they enter the workforce. And instructors will benefit as well, 
both here and at other higher learning centers across the country. We want to use this as an example of what is possible with, with, with the new instructional technology we have on campus and how to develop simulated collaborative learning experiences for our students across different departments. It's a holistic educational experience and that's what, what places like Memphis University ought to be providing. Creative technology and intensive collaboration on a multidisciplinary exercise. It's just another example of why Methodist University goes above and beyond to help students, educators, and industry professionals around the country engage, enrich, empower.